Thank you.
Hello! How are we? Now let me know if this is too loud of the music. I have my headphones on. I don't know what's good for you guys. Hi La Luna Lunar! How are you? I'm doing better. Um, I'm still not 100%. I'm sucking on a cough drop, so you'll have to forgive me. Um, the sniffles, all of that is still happening. So um, it's been frustrating, <laughs> especially because it's holiday season. So uh, it's not been it's not been fun. Hi, Emmy. Hi, how are you? So yeah, in this whole week I've been down. So I've, I've literally gotten no work done at all. Okay, awesome. Yeah, if it gets too much for you guys, just let me know and um, I'll adjust it. It's just, a, you know, I always start off with, you know, on the lower end. And then if you guys want me to bump it, I don't know if you if you find it distracting or any of that jazz. So just, just holler at me, I'll fix it. Um, yeah, I'm looking forward to this one too. Hi, Rowan. Thank you. Yeah, it's just, it's just been annoying. It's, it's just a cold. Um, so you know how those go. Um, we've got the weather change happening here in California. So it's like, uh, really cold at night and then early morning. And then, you know, as soon as the sun comes up, it's springtime again. So my body is just like, can you just not? <laughs> so it's adjusting to all of that. And, um, like Sunday last this past Sunday, I woke up with like a dry throat and I thought nothing of it. It just wouldn't go away. And then the sniffling happened and then the congestion. I'm like, okay, cool. This is fantastic. This is how this week's going to go. And then I thought I was starting to feel better on Wednesday and I was like, all right, cool. I'll get some stuff done around the house. I'll do the laundry dishes clean, yada, yada, yada. And then I was like, why did I do that? <laughs> Why didn't I just, because the next day I woke up worse again. So I'm like, all right, I'm going to like lay low <laughs> and do the bare minimum. I did manage to get some crocheting done though. So that was great. Hi, Aquarian. Thank you, Emmy. Low energy levels. Yeah. See, okay. I'm not the only one that's, um, <laughs> yeah, we'll get to the, we'll get to the karma cards. Um, I have actually had that deck for like two years now. And like, it just, it's kind of been one of those decks that I've put on the back burner. And, um, it's kind of hard to like do, uh, an unboxing video or like a flip through video on that. It's kind of more fun to do, um, with you guys. So you can see how it's played out because of how the cards are structured in that deck fantastic, interesting concept. Um, and so playing around with it has been fun, but, um, yeah, it just was put on the back burner. Like a lot of these decks that keep coming up in the polls. And the reason why, um, we do the, I vote for, have you guys vote on the polls for like the older decks is because it's fun to kind of look at those decks live. Um, because it's not one of those things that like will hit the algorithm cause it's not new. So, um, just an interesting uh, and also I want to do the um, postcards from spirit by Colette Baron Reed um, live too so that'll be an option because again a video on that just wouldn't really make sense um, it doesn't translate so doing it live would be more fun and we could like pull cards with that um, in the live yeah I don't know about if I've got the newer edition or not because I, I got these like I said like two years ago Hey, Jake. Nice to see you, buddy. Um, how are you? Uh, <laughs> but yeah, um, the, the packaging on mine, it just, it wasn't, it's fallen apart. So when you see it, don't judge. <laughs> it's, it's not, it's not, a uh, up to par with, um, a new, a new, uh, packaging. So, um, but before we get started, how is everyone doing? How was your guys' Thanksgiving? If you guys celebrate that, how was your guys' Indigenous Peoples Day? Um, again, I don't celebrate Thanksgiving, and when we do, it's just usually, you know, the, the immediate family, and we just eat 
all day. <laughs> um, and then of course we say, you know, we go around and say what we're thankful for and we um, have a moment, but we didn't gather this year at all, nor did we do last year <laughs> because of obvious reasons. But um, this year, just nobody was feeling up to it. Kind of like a blah, blah feeling this year. And then um, with me, I got sick. My husband's still not feeling 100%. He had to work anyway, so it was just one of those things where it's like not worth the effort to put in, um, and I didn't want to get anybody else sick with the cold, so just one of those years, and it's just another day, honestly. Um, Christmas, I think we're going to celebrate Christmas. I've been debating about whether or not I want to get out the tree and all of the decorations, um, because it is such a big to-do, it's a big task, and then, you know, eh, but I do, I really like, I, I enjoy putting out a tree, I feel like at least that much would be good. I think it would be kind of fun to share my ornaments with you guys, like my pick a few of my favorites that have really special meanings and make a video out of it, um, because I do have not only my ornaments, but my husband's kids' ornaments, and then I have um, my hand-me-down ornaments from my mom and all that stuff, and so I think that would be kind of fun. Have a little story, um, a little chat about the ornaments. Um, but other than that, I don't really think uh, we, we have too much Christmas decor. We haven't done anything about the decor in the outside. Um, we, we have the lights still up from Halloween. <laughs> We're like, oh, it's Christmas enough. <laughs> it works. We don't want to take them down. Um, all right. So anyway, about two more minutes and then we'll start with the unboxing. So this is like a like recent release. It came out, um, at least I, I got it. I pre-ordered it. So I got it Wednesday, I think, Tuesday or Wednesday. And I debated about making a video on it or doing it with a live with you guys and as I wasn't feeling good, I was like, oh, let's see if you guys want to do it for a live and unbox it together. So <clears throat> you guys voted on it. It was really close there for a hot minute. All three options were really <laughs> close in the poll. So that was fun to see. Um, but yeah, all right. So Everything looks good. Everything sounds good. Let me know in the chat. Um, so that way, if I need to adjust anything, I can go ahead and do so. If the music is distracting, let me know. I can turn it down or change the change the channel. Hi, Molly. Oh, yeah, I'm glad. Welcome, welcome. All right. Apprendez? I'm going to have horrible pronunciation of that, but hello. <laughs> All right. So we're going to go ahead and take a look and unbox together Kyle Gray's Gateway of Light. Oracle. So this is um, artwork by Jennifer Hawk Yard, published by Hay House, retails for $19.99 US, $25.99 in Canada. Hi Laura! Oh thank you Rowan, awesome. <clears throat> All right and then as always the links for how where to purchase for legit purchases for this deck will be in the description box. Um, and my only affiliate link will be with Amazon. Alrighty. So here we go. Activate the ancient wisdom within. This oracle is a stargate portal connecting you with the infinite intelligence of the universe. Each card is an energetic bridge to spiritual retreats, chakras, and guardian beings, leading you on a journey to connect with divine consciousness and receive messages to raise your vibration. You were born to light up the world. Let the gateways support your destiny. Alrighty. 44 cards and a guidebook. Oh, look at that. 
as above, so below, so within, as without. Connections to heaven and earth through the stargate of your heart. I love little surprises like that in the box. It's not necessary, but it's really, oh, and here's more. I call forth within the light of source. Thank you for standing at the forefront of my heart and mind. Thank you for activating the ancient wisdom of my soul. I welcome in the support of heaven, earth, the stars, light beings, and beyond, and so it is. All right. So I'm gonna say again, I apologize if I cough, if I sneeze, if I sniffle. It is that time of year. Okay. So we have the table of contents, how to use activation gateways, and then working with the cards, conducting the readings. Oh, wow, there's a lot. Okay. How often? Asking questions. Okay, it does look like we have spreads, so let's see here. The gateways are multi-dimensional spaces and you can work with many at once. They aren't limited by linear and therefore offer eternal portals to love and wisdom in their many shapes and forms. You will be transported to spiritual retreat spaces, unite with beings of light, and even receive messages from your own chakra system. All portals to the ever-present guidance that is available to you. This deck is a powerful tool, and the main reason for that is you're holding the cards. They aren't magic, they're a mirror, a reflection of the information, intelligence, and wisdom that is already within your soul. They aren't magic, you are. Every card you pick is a message from deep within you. When you work with the gateways, you give permission for these messages to be uncovered. They are therefore tools that remind you of your own innate power and connection to the incredible universe because you are the universe. I love that. All right. So let's see here. There's a lot of information here. How about we get to flipping through the deck and then we'll kind of, we'll do what we always do. We'll pull a card and we'll pick it, um, read from it. And then we'll kind of go from there. Cause I don't want to bore you guys with a bunch of information. Cause there's a lot in here, but here are the spreads. So we have two, and then we have the three. Yeah, this is the one that just came out this week. Wow, Stellar Gateway. Yeah. Then we have Akashic Records. Ooh, yeah, we are definitely getting deep with this deck here. All right, and then we have the interpretations. Okay, so let's flip through, see what we think about the cards, and then kind of go through and pull it, read from the guidebook, and go from there. Ooh, I like the back so far. Let me get this. This one did not want to tear. There we go. Goodness sake. All right. There's the back. pretty. I really like this concept. Looks like it's matte. Ooh, the cardstock isn't terribly thin either. It's flexible. It feels good in the hand. It's matte, no borders. Good size. That's really pretty. I really like his other decks. Um, if I remember, I'll link them in the eye for the re-upload. Um, I really love his Angels and Ancestors deck. It's so vibrant. Wow. Ooh. 
I'm really excited to work with this. I didn't know what to expect with it. Um, I liked the idea. I don't have much experience with like light activation or light codes or anything like that. So this would be interesting to work with. That's gorgeous. I agree, Rowan. Very vibrant, but it's not, um, doesn't hurt your eyes. And it's similar. The light is, it kind of reminds me of the, the Angel Answers deck that we just did a video on, but it's not blurry. Like it's vibrant, but you can see what's going on, if that makes any sense at all. It's stunning. Oh, wow. Every time I see Crystal and Skull together, I think of the Indiana Jones movie. The, um, <laughs> the not so favorited <laughs> Indiana Jones movie. <laughs> Really pretty. Very positive feeling. I like that you know what the card's title is and then it gives you a little bit of information down there. Oh yeah, Hay House was having their Black Friday sale. I think it's still on until tomorrow. Most decks, if they haven't sold out, they're like 50% off. So go check it out. This is not sponsored by Hay House, but it's a really good deal. If you're looking to get a new deck or if you've had a deck um, on your list for a while, a lot of the newer um, decks were sold out though. That's so pretty. I feel like these would be fantastic to like sit and meditate on. <coughs> Excuse me. <coughs> okay, I swallowed and it went down the wrong, like the wrong pipe. Oh gosh. Okay, so as I was saying, um, if you sat and you meditated with a picture, um, it kind of reminds me of like the. Um, the remember back in like the 90s they had that craze where you would like look at the, the, like the eye spy or whatever and you would like unfocus your eyes and then you would see a 3d image or whatever and in, in the image it kind of feels like that where if you just look at it and kind of unfocus you can see more things i don't know that's the vibe that i'm getting <clears throat> Yeah, I feel like there's a lot of advanced stuff here. Like, I, I don't know. Like, I couldn't tell you anything about light codes. I have read about them. I have knowledge that they exist <laughs> and people work with light codes and downloads and all of that. Couldn't tell you how to do it or go about it, but um, I definitely like the vibe of this deck. I think there's a lot of learning here that could be done in a different way than just reading from a book. Which for me, that's the kind of learning that I need. I need more like hands-on, tactile. This reminds me of a hobbit, um, hobbit hole. Ooh, the Holy Grail. <clears throat>
That's really cool. Ooh, that is gorgeous. <clears throat> It's a sign. <laughs> now we have some Lumerian here. It's an interesting, um, I want to say concept because I'm, I don't know what to, to, how I feel about like star seeds and Lumerian and all of that. Um, not to say that it's wrong because again, who am I to, say anything I just think it's an interesting way of thinking um, and honestly I will tell you 100% I do believe in aliens I, I mean I how could you not at this I, I think octopi octopi octopus octopus an octopus is an alien <laughs> I mean if you think about it like how many things we haven't discovered yet? Who's to say that aliens don't exist or there aren't other um, societies out there or even under the water, like under our own oceans, I should say. Stuff that keeps me up at night. <laughs> This deck will definitely help guide your spiritual development, but in a very personal and interactive way. Yeah, I think so. The art kind of reminds me of like Jenna Della Gradia's stuff in a way. Um, she does a lot of the art for Colette Baron Reed's decks. Yeah, we are dimensional, aren't we? It's crazy. Like to think of all the things that we still don't know about, like, how could you not entertain the idea? You know what I mean? Palladian, that's another, I'll say society that um, gets talked about. Mm, inner space. I like the addition of the chakras. Ooh. It looks like a kaleidoscope. Oh, love that. <laughs> yeah, I mean, I don't know. My grandma and I, I think that's one of the things that I, I remember fondly about UFOs. We'd always, you know, she'd have binoculars and we'd look out the window and we'd try to try to see if we can spot any. <laughs> oh, she was a character. Um, but yeah, like I, I don't know. I, I, I feel like there's been proof. But at the same time, the universe is so vast and it keeps expanding and there's like no stopping it. And so I feel like for, for my personal opinion, I feel like the earth is like a playground, like, like that they travel to, to kind of like see what's going on. Like, cause think about what the earth has that no other planet has that we know that we are aware of. Like all of our different climates, mountains, snow, oceans, deserts, all of that stuff. Like it's a playground. So I don't know. I feel like if we do get visited, it's because of that. That's so pretty. Somebody 
somebody who brings everything to the table. Okay, well, I need to change this song because I can't deal with people talking in my ear. <laughs> there we go. That is so pretty. These all are so pretty. Just bought this deck thanks to Hay House's big sale. Oh, wow. Hi, Richard. When you try to think of infinity and the universe never stops, it blows my mind. Yeah, that's the thing. Like, we as humans, I don't think, have the capability to conceptualize all of that right now. Like, I still don't know how Wi-Fi works. You know what I mean? Like... That sort of a thing is just insane. Think about Bluetooth. Think about like all of the things that we use on a daily basis now that way back 20 years ago, we were like, no, that's not a thing. Like that could never work. You know what I mean? Oh, that's pretty. Oh. Yeah, the the concept of the universe and like the Big Bang and all of that when when I first learned about it, it's something that would always like just wreck my brain. Um trying to figure it out and just kind of like just, you know, that we'll never know the vastness of it in my lifetime. It just freaks me out. It's it's one of those things where it's like it's so interesting, but if you think about it hard long enough it, it just i'm destroyed <laughs> again like keeps me up at night third eye activation oh absolutely it's stunning oh wow All right, and this is the last card. So we'll see how it shuffles. We'll pull a card, read from the guidebook, and then see what else we can look at in that guidebook. It feels good. Hi, Rosemary. Yeah, it looks like um, these cards just look like they are lit up from the inside. I feel like this deck has a little bit of everything. <laughs> well, we're happy to have you here, Katie. Okay. All right, we'll take a look at the earth activation. Yeah, the colors are just so stunning and done in a way that it doesn't hurt your eyes. It doesn't, um, you know, you kind of, some of them you kind of have to squint to see what is really back there. You know, I kind of really love that. I think they'd be fantastic for meditation work. I think that they would be fa fantastic for like a card pull a day so far because it does have some key words there that maybe if you ask like, what do you need to focus on today? And you got this card. It's like, okay, ground yourself, like take action, but it needs to be grounded. So let's just see. Oh, let's see what the book has to say here. Sixty-seven. Oh, close. Oh, there's a lot. Okay. So it says anchoring. Let's see. We'll do this. Wait, nope, nope, we'll do this. I want you to be able to see the book and the card at the same time. Oh, it would be really cool if this was hollow. Like, um, like the Pokemon cards. <laughs> really showing my age there. <laughs> All right, so Earth Star Activation. Anchoring, grounded action, Isis energy. The Earth Star Chakra, found around 6 to 12 inches or 15 to 30 centimeters below our feet, 
is the energetic portal that connects us directly with the soul wisdom of Mother Earth. It is our gateway to the underworld of the Earth, a space of sacred magic and mystery where we will find a lot of the tools, gifts, and skills the ancients used to connect with the Earth and her wisdom. The Egyptian goddess Isis appears on this card as our spiritual guide. She is a high priestess of the stars who knows the importance of connecting with the underworld to stay grounded, aware, and manifest all that we need to grow. Follow in her footsteps by connecting to your earth star, see below, anchor down and go digging within to find any parts of your magic, wisdom, and experiences you have pushed down both in this incarnation and in previous lifetimes. These tools could be helpful on the next phase of your journey. How to connect. Imagine deep roots from the soles of your feet penetrating the earth and anchoring around a giant copper crystal star. Visualize streams of consciousness moving up into your feet. Receive them and listen deeply. Your message. When you draw this card, know your earth star has been activated and the wisdom you once ignored is finally being acknowledged. The rejected parts of yourself have now been rediscovered. There is an opportunity for you to rediscover magic too, but stay firmly rooted in all of your endeavors. Let the earth hold and sustain you. Don't rush ahead. In fact, if you've been wondering if it's time to move forward, know that it isn't. Stay put for the time being. Important information is about to be revealed, so wait and stand strong. This is a time of integration and rest rather than pushing forward. Great wisdom lies within you. Dive deep and find it, and trust in yourself. You have more strength than you realize. What do we think? <laughs> Diana Cooper was one of the teachers that talks about Earth Star Chakra, one of the first people to discuss about it. I'm not sure about that. I mean, like, I, I'm not saying you're wrong. I'm just saying I didn't know, and I'm not sure. <laughs> <laughs> it's all right. Yeah, we, we get typos on here all the time. It's fine. We got gotcha. you. Yeah, I think, Denise, they would be great for daily meditation. I think there's a lot of really great information. I like that there's like an action on how to connect. I like that there's a message. I like that there's a background. So, you know, if you really are wanting to learn more, you have all of that available at your fingertips here. So let's just see real fast, going back to the beginning here, um, about how and what's going on. So, all right, we've got activations is about switching something on. And in the case of this deck, it's about switching on the ancient wisdom we all carry within. Awesome. Okay. Activation is a process of awakening the spiritual energy within the idea that a powerful intention combined with visualization through the artwork of the cards and spiritual connection calls forth from the heart of our being energies that can support our spiritual development and prepares for ascension. Ascension in this case is not about leaving this dimension or reality, but about drawing together all of the wisdom of our previous incarnations and all of the lessons of this current lifetime so that we can live in a more conscious and embodied way. Ascension isn't about leaving this body. It's about arriving fully in it and unlocking soul wisdom in the here and now. Although each of these cards will take you on a journey, ultimately their wisdom will take you back to yourself so that you can feel centered, strong, and empowered. I absolutely love this um, explanation because Sometimes when people talk about ascension, especially in the TikTok realm and, you know, like f going to 5D and all of that stuff, they don't really talk about how it's not leaving the body. It's not leaving the earth. It's not, you know, any of that. It's about literally elevating yourself. And this is the perfect way of um, explaining that. I really like that too, that you can, like, this is all about like coming back to you, um, to yourself. Awesome. Okay. So gateways, 
Every single card is a gateway, a vortex, or a portal that will connect you to a particular energy. As you move through the deck, you will come to understand that each card will allow you to explore the wondrous energy of the universe. Even though the cards will take you to different realms, they aren't actually taking you out of yourself, but further in. When we explore the complexities of the soul itself, we'll soon see that access to the cosmos comes through the heart. Our physical being is made up of the particles of former stars. We are star energy in this next form and therefore hold the infinite within. Within this deck, there are many different energies, some of which are explained below. So chakras, spiritual retreats, the or etheric spaces that can be visited in dreams and meditated states. Okay. And then light beans, which we talked about a little bit. Um, uh, let's see. Bring forward high vibrational energy and guidance. And then light goads, upgrades and downloads. Many of the activating energies are direct transmissions of ancient wisdom, energetic upgrades and downloads that will unlock your spiritual connection. They will bring through information that will help you embody the wisdom of your soul and previous incarnations. You may find that some of these transmissions unlock past memories or memories of past lives, excuse me, or reveal soul contracts that you agreed to before choosing to enter your current incarnation. You'll experience these energies in cards such as Atlantean activation and Lumerian sea codes and uncover the part of yourself that is infinitely connected to the divine. The I am presence. I'm going to check back in with chat. Yeah, right. It's just like, okay, this is, this is the, the verbiage that needs to be used. Um, and it kind of like makes sense to people who have no idea what's going on. You know what I mean? Like if they came into this blind and were like, okay, I'm attracted to this deck. I don't know what any of this is. It's stated in a way that gives you just enough information to be like, all right, cool, let's go, let's do this. The guidebook is a complete book for these concepts. Yeah. Yeah, I'm not sure about the Ascended Masters. Um, someone just purchased this deck, and, I, and forgive me, I don't remember who it was. Um but they purchased uh, the, this deck and the Ascended Masters book. So I'm not sure. It seems, it seems like it would go together very well. So then we have working with the cards. So it goes into free will and law of attraction. So let's just see real fast since we are, it's not too much uh, information to go through. So let's just read this. So we all can kind of get an, in, um, a feel and a vibe for how to work with this. So divine guidance is available to us at all times, but it's often hidden from view because the divine honors our free will. Absolutely. This means that it isn't able to come in and direct us unless we ask for it. Through working with these cards, we give permission to receive its guidance. Through working with the Gateway of Light Activation Oracle, we open up a stargate within our being that invites ancient wisdom to step forward. Every thought we think, every decision we make, or action or non-action we take is actually attracting the unfolding of our journey through life, even if we're not conscious of it. This law of attraction is also working through our energy. Its basic teaching is that like attracts like. How many times have I said that? <laughs> I love it. So the cards we pick best reflect the energies we hold within, the ancient wisdom that we carry, and the downloads we are receiving from the heavens. Each card, <laughs> as we have a choir, um, each card should feel like a confirmation of something we already know or feel familiar in a way that we can't quite put our finger on. They all bring back ancient memories. <laughs> Sorry. When I speak of ancient memories and ancient wisdom, I'm speaking about the information that is coded into our being, the information that has always been part of the source of our creation. 
Ultimately, our soul has never left the heart of source. Even though we're experiencing this individual incarnation, there's a part of us still residing in the heavens. Throughout our lifetime, there will be moments when we know we are one with everything that is and have a sense of what we need to do to fulfill our soul's purpose now. I believe these are the times when we are fully embodying our soul's ancient wisdom. I also believe that through cultivating awareness of this wisdom, we create the perfect foundation to have more of these experiences. The gateway helps activate this process. So approaching with integrity. So communicate um, this to help speak Natasha. Oracle cards help us communicate with the divine. So we must approach a reading with integrity. That means when we pick a card that doesn't tell us what we want to hear, we have to recognize that is what we need to hear. There's a big difference. I love that. When approaching the cards for guidance or sharing them with others, surrender your agenda and be open to receiving what is meant for you. Trust whatever comes through, even if it doesn't make sense immediately. Give it time. And then it goes into just bonding with your deck here. Um, it has an activation prayer. It's a little ritual for that. And then storing your cards. Um, do what feels right for you. All right, so here we get to conducting the reading. I know this is kind of boring, but at the same time, it's not. <laughs> like, it's kind of boring to sit and read through it, but it gives you a full background on how to use this deck and where it comes from. And sometimes um, just flipping the, through the cards is not enough to make sure that that's a deck for you. Um, and going through all of the necessary background information on the deck really gives you a deeper understanding for how to use the deck and then whether or not you're going to vibe with it or if it's something that you even need. Alrighty. This deck has been created so that you will easily be able to give accurate readings for yourself and others. Start with the best intentions, knowing you are in control of what happens during the reading and that light beings and your own guides are there to support you through the entire process. Giving card readings with this deck is absolutely safe and insightful. So then we have raising the vibration, shuffling the cards, and then how to read for yourself. Just shuffle the deck and then um, say something like, thank you, source of ancient wisdom, for revealing to me what I need to know. I am willing to listen and pick your cards. Basically the same thing for the next person. Focus on positivity first. Jumping cards, love that. Reverse cards. So there's not really a reversal here other than, you know, if, if you do have a reverse card that comes out, it's like pay special attention to that. Asking questions, that's kind of what I wanted to see. Um, so no yes or no's. Are you asking what you need to know or what you want to know? Asking for what you need allows your connection to be clear. So giving thanks at the end. Okay, and then that's it, okay. I just wanted to make sure that we got all of the information that we needed for this deck because I know Kyle Gray has a lot of great um, wise wisdom to share. So what do we think about this? Oh, <laughs> this is so not boring. Yeah. So I, I have to cover the bases of like, you know, there, there are people that are like, just show me the cards. I don't want to know anything else. Just show me the cards. There are people that don't want to know my opinion. They just want to see, um, the artwork, which is fine. Um, but at the same time, when doing a live like this, especially when it's a new, um, a new release. It's always nice to kind of go through the whole guidebook to see what the author meant when it's specifically a Oracle deck like this, because tarot, the difference between a tarot deck and an Oracle deck is tarot has a specific structure. So we don't technically need to go through the whole guidebook, um, to see if there's a certain way, unless they created their own tarot system. With an Oracle deck, it's nice because they all kind of have their own guidelines and rules. And um, with something like this, when we're talking about, you know, light codes and 
activation and that sort of thing, it's nice to see the background and how to use this deck appropriately. Yeah, Kyle and Hay House, yeah. <laughs> Very meditative. Yeah, it's definitely a deck I'm really excited to work with and see like what comes out, what I learn from it. Um, I like decks that kind of like challenge the way that I see the world and I see spirituality. Um, kind of opens my mind to more information. Like I didn't really think I would like the Starseed Oracle by um, uh, Rebecca Campbell and Danielle Noel, but I really liked it for its, um, it was very in depth and like you can do a multitude of readings for it, whether you believe in the Starseed um, concept or not. Um, and so with this one, I'm really interested to learn more about like the gateways and all of all of these different uh, concepts, I'll say. I keep saying that word, but I, that's the only word I can think of at the moment. Um, and kind of dive a little bit deeper and with somebody that I trust to give me correct information. I trust, you know, Kyle Gray's info. I feel like um, he's been very, uh, has, a, has a good integrity base there. So, I mean, I, I don't feel like, at least with what I've read here so far, I don't feel like he's talking out of his, you know, place. <laughs> yeah, the guidebook really um, has a lot of information. I wasn't expecting that much. This ring, um, it's uh, supposed to be a moonstone. Whether it is or not, I don't know. I feel like it is. <laughs> it's one of those rings that I bought off of a website because I was like connected to the style. So I don't know. I, I believe it is. It has flashes uh, like it is moonstone. But um, I don't I don't think the band is like actual silver. I don't know. I'm not good with jewelry. Uh, oh, it is. It's actually it's, it's stamped 925. So it is. Yeah. I'm not good with like quality jewelry. I couldn't tell you, you know, what one thing is or not. And the only time I can tell if it's like a real crystal or gemstone is if I have it out and I can feel it. If it's like in a recessed um, piece like this, I couldn't, I couldn't tell you. I'm, I'm really bad with all of that. <laughs> Yeah, I think this is a really interesting deck. The quality seems great. Um, it's not as thin as um, like some of the other decks that have come out from Hay House this past year or so. Um, it shuffles really nicely. I don't have a complaint. Um, I feel like the information here, you can use it for a daily pool, meditation, I even like that this could literally be pulled as a yes, like do the thing. That's really cool. <laughs> yeah, absolutely. That's why we do these videos is so that you can see what's, uh, what's going on, what the deck's about, um, if you connect with it or not. Um, there's been plenty of decks where I thought I was really going to enjoy it and then I end up getting it and I'm like, meh, it's okay. But then, you know, that deck five months from now, I can like feel really connected to it. It's just one of those interesting things. Yeah, I like that deck too. Yes, um, I will pull, it hasn't been officially an hour yet, so I will pull a card um, for you guys if you want, but I want to stop at like seven just because, again, everything hurts and I'm dying. No. <laughs> it's been a week. It's been a horrible, horrible week. So Rose, I'll pull for you. Rosemary. Oh, we 
got two there. All right. Star Bean Healing Codes. So important information. Wounds are healed and recharging. Then we have Holy Grail. Inner discovery, finding sacredness. You are what you seek. All right. So let's just read the messages here. So for the first one, if the world seems overwhelming or intense at this time, know that it's okay for you to retreat to a safe space to cleanse and recharge your energy. You may feel called to be a healer for others and share healing with the world, but please ensure that you are balanced and filled up with light first. This is not the time for you to sacrifice your own well-being in order to serve others. Light beings are placed uh, are placing their hands upon you now, filling you with divine light that will wash away any blockages or stagnant energy standing in the way of your freedom and wholeness. Star beings are channeling healing codes and frequencies into your being, and it's important for you to stay alert for any intuitive guidance about your body so that you can be restored to health once more. And then we have the Holy Grail. Okay, hey, your message. You have been on a great quest, seeking, searching, discovering, but the further you've gone, the more your heart has called you back. You may still be looking for treasure, but you are now discovering that all roads lead back to you. The great source of creation holds up a shiny mirror in front of you and you see your reflection. You are the answer. You are the divine. You are created. You are creating. The gateway of your divinity has opened and the vessel of your being is flowing with infinite light. You, are be uh, you have been searching for God and God is within, so go within. This is the key to heaven. Your cup is overflowing. Your gifts are being unlocked. Let the world share your treasure. Oh, I love that. Hi, Savannah. Oh, no, it's fine, Rosemary. Uh, it's Honestly, it's because I've just not been feeling good. Normally, I would be like, yeah, let's take this thing to an 11 and just, you know, go for it. But, like, with this whole thing, it's not been fun. Yeah, Rowan. Rowan and then Wich Richard. <laughs> You know what? It happens. All right. We'll do one for Rowan. Okay. Well, we just want one card, please. There we go. Oh, we got two. All right, watch this be the theme here. All right, Halls of Learning, Spirit Guides, Confirmation, Great Lessons. And then Lumerian Seed Codes, Embracing Sensitivity, Uniqueness, Living with Grace. Okay. So Halls of Learning, I love that. Your message. You are on the path to great learning. Spiritual beings are drawing close to support you. If you are facing challenging or difficult circumstances or have just moved through such a time, you are being called to review what you have learned about yourself. If you are still feeling overwhelmed by a certain event or asking why it happened, call on source and your guides to reveal to you the pattern trauma or wound that has contributed to this challenge. If you aren't experiencing challenging energy, the reason is that you've made huge progress on your spiritual journey. So much so that your perspective has shifted so that you can view every challenge as a window of opportunity. The Halls of Learning Gateway indicates that your spiritual gifts are developing at this time. I love that. And then Lumerian Seed Codes. Your message. You are a highly sensitive being. Amen. 
you feel, uh, you might feel that this is a curse, <laughs> but this card is here to let you know that it is a gift. Absolutely. It indicates that you have spent lifetimes upon lifetimes living with a giant shield up to stop the world seeing the real you, but you are a highly unique soul with incredible gifts that are worth sharing. Through embracing your uniqueness, you can help many others embrace their own. This lifetime is a more graceful existence with less, def uh, less defense and more trust. It's not about protecting yourself, but stepping into the space of surrender and revealing your true self. Oh, love that. Thank you. Okay. So then Richard, Miss, no, okay, uh, Molly. Okay, Richard and then Molly. Looks like we're doing twos tonight. All right, so for Richard, we've got the divine matrix, interconnectedness, synchronicity, God incidences. <laughs> oh, the little things in life. I love the combining of words there. Okay, heart of source, all encompassing love, unconditional acceptance and serenity. All right, table of contents. Alright, 64. Alright, you are in alignment with the oneness of life and the inner workings of the universe. You are part of something great. That means that you are greatness expressing itself. Not one thing in your life has happened by chance. Even when you felt that things have been against you, a process has been unfolding, helping you understand your connectedness to all things. So there's no need to feel insignificant or lonely. It's also important to remember that the universe is always working in your favor and for your highest good. You may have felt lost, but, uh, or excuse me, you may have felt loss, but know that nothing is never lost for we are all held in the heart of source and love is our connection to all things. And then Heart of Source. You are connecting directly with the Heart of Source, the creator of life and love. You are blessed to receive this card for it shows the cup of your heart is being filled with love until it overflows. The divine energy that is with you now is helping you melt away any blockages so that you can be open to the love, acceptance, and appreciation that you deserve. You are being encouraged to view yourself in a loving way and give yourself permission to be loved. If you have been holding back for a while but are now ready to share this love you have within, this card lets you know it is safe to do so. You are love, loving, and lovable. Step forward, claim your worth, and enjoy a new level of spiritual openness. You are truly blessed. I love that. All right. Thanks, IT guy. I did not have a Thanksgiving at all. I was sick. <laughs> but thank you. All right. And then um, Molly. Okay, Meg, you will be the last one. So we'll do Molly now, and then Meg is going to be the last. Okay, come on. <laughs> there we go. All right. 
Stellar Gateway Activation, Infinite Potential Manifestation Vortex. Venusian Galactic Council, Star Being Guides, Answer the Call, Time to Shine. Alrighty. I like how the music kind of just goes along with the cards that get pulled. Alrighty. Stellar Gateway Activation Message. You are a master of manifestation. Every one of your thoughts, actions, non-actions, and choices is affecting the unfolding of your path. Realize that you have great potential and power within you, and through your focused awareness, you can draw on heavenly support to create the life of your wildest dreams. Know that all of the energies you connect with are carried up to your stellar gateway, and if they are aligned with the intentions your soul had before this incarnation, opportunities will come your way. It is important to consider connecting with your cosmic origins at this time, and also tracking down the intentions of your soul. For if you can bring your wishes in this life together with your pre-life intentions, you can live a life that is aligned with the highest heavens. Love that. Love. I really have been enjoying these messages here. All right, Venusian, Venusian Galactic Council. <laughs> it's so bad that every time I hear like galactic or anything like like Starfleet or whatever, it just reminds me of sci-fi because I just that's what I grew up on. So like everything. It kind of like doesn't hold the gravitas that I think it should because in my mind I'm like, oh yeah, that's Star Wars or Star... Anyway, sorry, off topic, but yeah. Uh, Venusian Galactic Council. I'm so sorry. <laughs> Your message. This is a call to action. You are being asked to step up and create the changes you want to see in this world. Uh-huh. Love this. You are... Uh, you have a reason for being here and you have the potential to inspire, support, and heal your corner of the world. Don't let this information scare you or overwhelm you, for you are being prepared energetically to step into this role. The ideas you have been um, having recently are divine downloads, but you aren't being called to make dramatic changes into your life, simply to move forward step by step. The Venusian Galactic Council will reveal more information to support you. Be aware of downloads of information and spiritual signs, for they are a confirmation that you are on the right path. This is so... I just... I'm really loving the different messages here. And it's so positive, but like there's like an air of like take an action to it as well. Like really interesting messages. Oh, thank you, Laura. I appreciate that. You know, it's... <laughs> being sick is being sick. It As long as it's not um, the dangerous kind, I'm okay. Like, a cold is... A cold is a cold is a cold. And I'm alright with that. I quarantined myself from my husband, and that was hard this week. <laughs> I was just like, don't get sick. I don't know what this is yet. And it's just a cold. But still, it's just like taking everything out of me this week. You know, like your whole like trying to rest to like feel better is super hard for me. I don't like because once I stop moving or stop doing anything, then I'm done. Then like I it's hard to get back that momentum. And so this whole week I've just been like, I hate resting. I hate this, but I have to do it. I hate this, but I have to do it. And I couldn't do it. <laughs> All right. So then our last reading is for Meg here. Okay, I'm going to take the top two. Oh, you got Holy Grail. And then Sacred Inner Space. So I'll read the Holy Grail message again. 
That's interesting how they came out. All right, Holy Grail. Inner discovery, finding sacredness, you are what you seek. You have been on a great quest, seeking, searching, discovering. But the further you've gone, the more your heart has called you back. You may still be uh, looking for treasure, but you are now discovering that all roads lead back to you. The great source of creation holds up a shiny mirror in front of you and you see your reflection. You are the answer. You are the divine. You are created. You are creating. The gateway of your divinity has opened and the vessel of your uh, being is flowing with infinite light. You have been searching for God and God is within. So go within. This is the key to heaven. Your cup is overflowing. Your gifts are being unlocked and let the world share your treasure. And sacred inner space. All right, sacral chakra, tenderness and sensuality. Your message, you are being guided to the gateway of your sacred self. This is an opportunity to recognize that you, or excuse me, this is an opportunity to recognize that you, the more tender and vulnerable aspects of your being holds key to great power. Honor the sacred within. Reclaim any parts of yourself that you have disconnected from or abandoned. If you want to experience more love and belonging, look within. There is a huge lesson in finding love within yourself. Realize that false narratives have been floating around your energetic field, stories that have discouraged you from expressing yourself. You may have even been lied to and told you aren't beautiful. This card is here to remind you that you are beautiful and more importantly, you can create beauty in the world. Recognize that you hold the power of the universe within and then you'll find your flow. Awesome. These are just stunning cards. I'm really enjoying the messages that they all have in the fact that <laughs> they're just so beautiful. There's just so much to learn here. I'm really excited. Right? It's like two cards have just been wanting to pop out. Mario Kart song kind of makes people to do task assignment or typing faster. I've heard that. Yeah. Um, and then like when it gets stuck in your head, it gets stuck in your head for the rest of the day. and You can't get it out. Stargate. Yeah. I remember Stargate. Oh my gosh, I know, right? Like, that is just a cold. You're like, oh, thank God, it's just a cold. Oh my God, what is a... This is like a crazy timeline. Like, crazy timeline. I don't know how I feel. Like, if... Like, you know the concept of, like, different timelines and different um, dimensions and all of that stuff? I'm like, what changed in the previous timeline <laughs> to get us here? And would I want to be in that timeline over this timeline? And then, yeah, yeah. Um, community calls it uh, the darkest timeline. I've been rewatching. That's what I've been binging this week is community. <laughs> binging that and Gravity Falls. Because apparently those are two shows that I've not really watched when they came out. I caught com Community when it was on the air originally every once in a while, but it wasn't something that, like, I stuck with. And I never watched Gravity Falls before now, but I kept hearing how good it was, and I'm like, all right, I'll try it out. Oh, my God, it's so cute. You're welcome. Oh, my gosh, Mystified, I'm so sorry. Ugh. Yeah, it's beautiful artwork. You're welcome, Meg. Absolutely. I'm I'm really enjoying this. I mean, the price tag, what was it? $19.99 for the US? That's not a bad price tag for all of that information. I'm very surprised. Um, and then also, if you go to Hay House and you get it on the sale, even better. Um, there's, a, there's a few decks that um, I've been thinking about purchasing, but I'm not sure. Um, the quantum, the, wanted to call it quantum solace. Maybe that's what it's called, but the quantum Oracle, 
um, that they had. That's something that I wanted to pick up possibly. And then they had the psychic tarot and the psychic love tarot. I know you guys have requested, so we'll see uh, about that. But I also have decks coming. Um, I got to get around to actually making the videos um, this week because, you know, couldn't get anything done this week at all. And I feel so terrible about that. But at the same time, you got to do what you got to do. Um, so I just filmed the macabre tarot that came. Oh my. Oh my. All I got to say is there's a surprise and I was not ready for it. Um, <laughs> it was really cool. So that should be coming this week. Um, and as always, my videos will hit Patreon and channel members first. So if you're interested in becoming any of those, uh, the links will be in the description box. Um, same with my merch, same with my socials, same with all of the affiliate links and where you can purchase the decks that the videos are about. Um, and also if you aren't aware, I am still doing private readings through Etsy. If that's something that you're interested in, the uh, shop link will be in the description box for that as well. So that's something to look into. I'm trying to think of all of the other things I've got going on right now for you guys. I think that's it. <laughs> I think that's it. I don't know. I'm not sure. <laughs> Yeah, it seems like there's just a lot of um, positive light energy coming out of this. And I feel like what a fantastic deck to have. And, you know, it's not saying that, like, it's not a toxic positivity deck. It's not like beaming with like, oh, love and light, let's force this down your throat. It's like, okay, like we're talking about this specific um, activation. We're talking about this specific um, concept. And, you know, that's what it is. And then it gives you an action plan. It gives you something uh, or how to connect to the gateway, how to connect to the information and the downloads. So the sacred geometry deck. I think that's on my list. Let me double check. It off the list here. Yeah, it's on my list. <laughs> my two page list that my ever expanding. <laughs> I'm trying to get to all of the requests, but if you are a Patreon and you are a um, channel member, your request gets moved up to the top. All of those little perks. <laughs> oh, thank you, Molly. I appreciate it. Yeah, I, I did. I, I tried my best to rest. It's one of those things like that, m even though like my body is telling me like, dude, like sit it out, chill out, like do nothing. My mind is like, no, like I want, I'm able to do all of these things. And then the moment I try to do it, I'm like, oh yeah, no, I don't feel good. Uh, I'm about to go sit this one out. So yeah, it's just, it's one of those things where I can't, I, I'm not good at self care at all. Like I can preach it all day long and I get the concept, but me actually trying to do it, it's not fun. I actually took a bath for the first time that sounds really odd. So I usually shower, <laughs> I take a bath to like soak and relax and all that stuff. So I poured like so much Epsom salt into the bath and like I forced myself to stay in it for like 30 minutes and it was torture. Like I could not relax. I could not just like let it happen. And um, like, towards the end of it, I'm like dripping with sweat and I'm like trying to sweat out the cold and I'm like, all right, I just, I gotta be done with this. Like I can't. And I'm like, what else are you going to do today, Natasha? What else do you have to do? You don't got to do anything, but just get better. And then my body's like, yeah, no, peace out. <laughs> Bye. <laughs> oh, lemon and ginger tea. Yeah. We're going uh, grocery shopping tomorrow for sure to get me some more, uh, um, tea. I usually really like to um, have the throat coat uh, tea. I forget the brand. Um, and I thought we had some because normally we always do. And I go into the into my little tea. I have a tea container. And I'm like looking through no throat coat. I'm like, ah. So I ended up, um, it was a tea 
with um, like skull cap and um, peppermint. I think it had ginger. Anyway, it was it was nice. It was relaxing. Hey, $16, that's not bad. <laughs> oh, you are welcome, Lourdes. It's so nice to see you guys. I've missed you. You're welcome, Denise. Uh, yeah, thank you. I've missed you guys. And so, like, I thought about, like, maybe skipping this week, especially since it's Small Business Saturday. Yesterday was Black Friday. I'm like, oh, everybody will probably not want to do it. And then... I was like, no, I want to see everybody. <laughs> yeah, tea ritual. You know, I, I definitely um, enjoy my tea. Oh, hi, Alejo. Oh, you are very welcome. Buenos Aires. Oh, that's a place I want to go. Oh, I love raw honey and tea. Absolutely love raw honey. And I do like um, raw stevia as well, the... the just the grounded up leaf. Um, I think that's what I'm gonna do when once I'm done here, is make some tea. Put on the kettle. <laughs> um, and like I've, I've been finding like what teas that I really, really like to, um, cause I've been like sticking to like certain kinds. Like I love my chai. I love like spiced orange, um, black tea, green tea, peppermint tea, all of those, but like the ones that are more on the heavy herbal side, I'm not, I need to sweeten it. But if it's not heavy on the herbal, then I don't have to worry about sweetening. Um, but yeah, I love tea. And then I have the problem of like, okay, it's like too, way too hot. So I'll like sit it down and then forget about it. And then when I go back to, to it, I'm like, oh, uh, it's room temp now and it doesn't, <laughs> it's not good. Same thing with coffee. Like I can't babysit the coffee. <laughs> oh, I'm so happy that it does, Mystified. I would love to come visit, Lourdes. Absolutely. Make it, make it one of these days. I would love to. Right, Molly? Okay, yeah. So baths are not, like, I don't know. I get restless really easily and like I have, I always have to be doing something with my hands if I'm sitting down. So like this week it's just been nothing but like crochet because I can't, I can't just sit and do nothing. I can't turn that part of my brain off. Um, and so in a bath, like you are confined, you're just there with water. Um, so normally I'll bring a book, um, and I'll have like my water or sometimes a wine glass of wine, but like, it's not comfortable. Uh, so um, my sister actually had bought um, one of those body bath pillows where you, it's kind of like a cushion where you lay against it. So it supports your head and all the way to the, your lower back. And she's like, game changer. So I'm like, okay, well now I got it. If I had that, maybe, <laughs> maybe I would enjoy baths a little bit more. Um, but like, it's just like, you're just, I don't know. And then also too, I feel guilty because it's like you're filling up a whole bathtub with water and we're in California. So I always feel bad. I feel like it's a waste of water. But then on the flip side, it's like if you're showering, all of that water just hits you and it goes down the drain anyway. So I don't know. I'm trying to be more conscious, but. grow your own tea. I want to, I had a tea plant, a little seedling, or almost a little older than a seedling. And it died on me this past two months ago, it died on me. And so I'm like, Oh, well now I got to try again. Cause that's what I want to do too. I want to like start making my own teas, my tea blends. Aniseed. Ooh. Yeah. It's the, um, the P the, the P T, um, I'm going to say it and then it's not going to sound right, but I believe it's, hmm, I don't want to say it cause I'm going to get demonetized. Hold on. It's a, but it's, it's, if you search butterfly P T, that's what it is. That's what that is. That, yeah, the flower. Mm hmm. Ooh, a live zoom. That would be fun. 
oh yeah in LA uh right like you don't even want to wash a dish you just like and save <laughs> it's just it's insane I'm in Northern California and like uh we're you know we're we're a good while away from LA but like it's still California and it's crazy it's crazy how we we live next to water but yet like we're conserving everything but yeah washing dishes i always feel bad um but at the same time like you have to think about like on a global scale if you flush it you flushing a toilet is not as bad as like amazon's whole system you know what i mean Yeah, I really like aniseed. I actually have some somewhere. The seed. Uh, tea concept deck? I want to say there is. Um, I know it's more uh, based on herbal. Like, have a have like a herb deck. There's plenty of those. But like, as far as actual tea. I don't know. There's a tea leaf oracle that I've reviewed. I haven't used it in a while, though. Um, but yeah, I'm not sure. That's that would be an interesting, an interesting concept with like the tea cups filled with the different tea. I would enjoy that. Right? Yeah, like, I feel guilty about filling up the bathtub. And most of the time, too, like, you know, you're filling it up with hot water. And then, so, like, I'll fill it up to, like, <laughs> with the bare minimum. And I'm like, this is uncomfortable. <laughs> the equivalent of being um, not being shirtless in a public space. That's how uncomfortable it is for me. Hmm. I want to learn how to read tea leaves. It's on my list. It's on my list of things to, to learn. Yeah, I think, I don't know how we would figure that out. <laughs> Scared me. Hello, Sophia, welcome. Um, it's more like, it's not necessarily a drought in LA. What happens is like they they get their water from Northern California. So like they, it, they, they don't have a, like a rain collection service. It, it, I could be wrong. Um, but like Northern California pro collects water and gives it, brings it down to LA. There's some sort of weird thing set up, but California is like always in a drought. Um, we, there's, we have a, um, Folsom Lake, if you go online and um, search Folsom Lake, uh, there's before and after pictures of like how full it used to be and then how much the water receded and how little there is left of it right now. So we're waiting for more rainfall to kind of like fill everything up again. Um, it's just insane. Um, and don't get me started on climate change because it's, it's a thing, it's real is happening um like for instance like we talked about a little bit earlier how like the weather is insane here the the um as far as california is concerned um the the amount of forest fires have increased the amount of um heat exhaustion <laughs> um the higher heat levels um in death valley it reached 127 correct me if I'm wrong, degrees Fahrenheit this year, this summer, um, which is insane. That's like, how do you breathe? So it, every year we get increasingly hot, uh, temperatures in the summer. And then our winters are barely anything anymore. Like we hardly get any, like we have like a good couple weeks of rain and then it stops in the winter. We don't have a spring. We have a, okay, here's winter. And then we have a week of like a good, 70 degree weather and then it's instantly 90 degrees and then it's summer from like the end of March <laughs> all the way till like the middle of September if that 
is insane. So, um, and it, it's you, it's been like increasingly going that way, but it seems like the last couple of years, it's just been dramatically increased and it's insane to see, um, that big of an increase in the weather changes. We've had increasingly more, um, uh, hurricanes across on the, um, East coast. We've had, um, just insane weather patterns. Um, so this is things that we've not seen this much of this concentrated in a long time. So, um, this is what scientists have been trying to scream at us for years now. Um, I remember way back in elementary school, we were talking about the three R's reduce, reuse, and recycle. And so again, um, we need to be making sure that when we do our voting, when we do, um, any of that, not, I'm not getting, I'm not choosing sides. I'm s strictly saying that we need to vote for policies that, um, have climate issues, um, in the forefront. So that means looking at big businesses, big corporations, looking at coal, looking at, um, you know, not making pipelines in certain areas that are sacred, um, fracking, all of those things. We need to be making a conscious decision with our vote, even though it seems like it doesn't matter. Um, it does make sure you read all of the pamphlets for the propositions, make sure that you're, you know, um, standing up for Mother Earth because nobody else really can. Like, sh this is the only one we got. And it seems like the people that can make change are trying to get off the planet. So, um, you know, <laughs> we're not going to terraform Mars and then instantly have everybody go to Mars. Like, it's just not going to happen. So, uh, not in our lifetime. So, we need to make sure that we are providing a safe space here. We are, you know, taking care of the only true planet that we've got. She's all we've got. So um, we're seeing coastlines recede. We're seeing all of this and I'm going way past than I thought I did. So anyway, long story short, um, do, do research and take care of, take care of our mother. Cause this is the only one we got. California is wild. Yeah. Hi Coralie. Yeah, the um, bathtubs are are a bit of a luxury. <laughs> Pruny fingers, yeah. <laughs> yeah, the U.S. is weird with not with using the Fahrenheit and not using um, the imperial system for measurements. I I know, I get it. <laughs> yeah, palm oil. That's another big issue, right? Oh, I like that. Adding redesign to that. That's really cool. Well, on that note, giving you guys something to think about, <laughs> I'm going to call it a night, but please, please, please have a great rest of your weekend. Um, look forward to some new videos coming out. I will be um, posting some more and as always, thank you guys so much for hanging out, for spending your time with me. So nice to see all of you again. I appreciate each and every one of you. Don't forget to check out all the links. Don't forget to like, subscribe, and hit that notification bell on your way out of the video. And with that being said, thanks again, and I will see you in my next video. Bye, guys.